Here we're going to look at three forgotten trigonometric functions. So we all know about the cosine and the sine, but have you ever heard about the versed sine? In other words, the versine or the exterior secant, the x secant? You might have heard of the chord, but you didn't probably think of it as a trigonometric function. So that's what we're going to look at here. The versine, the x secant, and the chord function. So let's recall that if we have a unit circle, and we put a triangle inside this unit circle that has hypotenuse one, and so in other words, it's a right triangle here, then the side length of this right triangle given down here in blue is given by cosine theta, where theta is that angle, and then this height of the triangle is given by sine theta, where again, theta is that angle. So these three forgotten trig functions are also related to this triangle. So the verse sine is the distance between this right angle and the circle. And then the chord is the distance between this point on the circle and this point on the circle. And then finally, the x secant is this distance from the circle into the vertex of this triangle that you get by extending this radius of the circle and finding your parallel line to this height of the triangle. So these are all pretty interesting geometric constructions related to this unit circle and this triangle. So you might think to yourself, why haven't I heard of these trigonometric functions before? And that's because they can all be easily described in terms of cosine and sine. And let's first look at this versed sine, in other words, this verse sine. And notice that we can measure the distance from here to the edge of the circle. That's one because we know this is a unit circle, but it's also equal to cosine plus verse sine. So in other words, we have this cosine theta plus this verse sine theta is equal to one, which gives us a nice formula for the verse sine theta in terms of the cosine theta. It's just one minus cosine theta. But sometimes we don't see that formula for the verse sign. We see one that's a little bit different, and we can expose that in the following way. We can write this as two times one half one minus cosine theta, but then recognize that we've got a power reducing formula built in here. So one half times one minus cosine theta is the same thing as sine squared theta over two. So another formula that you might see for this verse sine function is verse sine theta equals two sine squared theta over two. And in fact, sometimes it's more common to not use the verse sine function, but instead use the half verse sine function. And that can be denoted by HAV theta, and that's just one half ver theta. And so notice that's gonna be the same thing as uh, one minus cosine theta over two, and it's also gonna be the same thing as sine squared theta over two. So it has those two descriptions in terms of the more familiar trig functions. But notice this also allows us to write cosine theta in terms of the half verse sine theta, and we can do that in the following way. We can multiply two over here, and that'll leave us with one minus two times half verse sine theta. Great. And so that's another common relationship between cosine and haversine. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up and we're gonna look at an application of this to the spherical law of cosines. There's an important formula built from the haversine function and we can actually derive it by recalling the spherical law of cosines and then using our translation formula that we just talked about. So let's say we have a unit sphere like this and then we have a spherical triangle on that unit sphere. And it has side length A, B, C, and then this angle opposite C is theta. Then the spherical law of cosines, which I won't derive, looks like this. So we have cosine C equals cosine A times cosine B plus sine A sine B cosine theta. So now I wanna rewrite this so we have the law of haversines, and we're gonna do that by recalling that cosine of something, I've called it t, is one minus two times the haversine of t. And also we've got this um, angle subtraction formula involving cosine as well. So cosine a cosine b is equal to cosine a minus b minus sine a sine b. So let's go ahead and rewrite this formula first using the second bit and then we'll use this first bit. So that's gonna give us cosine c equals cosine a minus b minus sine a sine b plus 
sine A, sine B, cos theta. Great. But now notice we can factor a sine A, sine B out of the last two terms on the right-hand side. So that gives us cosine A minus B minus sine A, sine B, and now we're going to have 1 minus cosine theta. Where notice I've just factored a minus sign out as well, I just have to change that sign. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is replace my cosines with haversines and see what I get there. So I'll have 1 minus 2 haversine C on the left hand side equals 1 minus 2 haversine A minus B on the right hand side minus sine A sine B and then 1 minus cosine theta, well, we can notice that that is just going to be equal to 2 haversine theta by either our earlier construction or just inverting this formula right here. Um, okay, great. So now what we can do is start canceling some things. So notice this 1 and this 1 will cancel. And then furthermore, all of these minus signs will cancel. And finally, all of these twos will cancel. And that gives us a formula that's important in spherical trigonometry known as the law of haversines, which is the haversine of C equals the haversine of A minus B um, plus sine A sine B haversine theta. Great. Okay, so now let's go ahead and clean this up and we'll look at the x secant. In other words, the exterior secant. We just got done looking at the versine and the haversine function. Now we want to look at the exterior secant. So just to recall, what we get for the exterior secant is thinking about this radius of the circle and extending that ray. And then thinking about this guy right here, which is a line parallel to this height of the triangle, and those will intersect at a point, and that gives us this larger triangle. Okay, so now by elementary geometry, we see that this triangle right here with leg length cosine theta, height sine theta, and hypotenuse one is similar to this triangle right here with leg length one, because that's a radius of a circle, height given by this, and then notice hypotenuse is given by one plus the exterior secant. So again, because those are similar triangles, we can set up a proportion regarding the lengths of their legs. And the way that I want to do that is the hypotenuse of the smaller triangle divided by the leg length of the smaller triangle. So that's 1 over cosine theta has got to be the same thing as the hypotenuse of the larger triangle divided by the leg length of the larger triangle. So that's going to be the same thing as 1 plus the x secant theta. Because notice that's what we get if we do 1 and then plus this little extra bit. This little extra bit is defined to be the x secant. And then we need to divide that by 1. But dividing by 1, we don't really need to do anything. But maybe I'll write that in anyway. Okay, but now we've got a nice formula for the exterior secant in terms of the cosine. Notice we can solve this pretty easily and we see that the x secant theta is just equal to 1 minus the normal secant theta. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and move on to the chord function. And here we're just going to use Again, some elementary geometry, and in this case, we'll use elementary coordinate geometry to write this chord function in terms of our more familiar trig functions. So I want to think about this all happening in a Cartesian coordinate plane. So let's put the origin right here. The positive x-axis is going out this way, which makes this point right here on the edge of the circle equal to the point 1, 0. So that means this chord can be described as the distance from this point 1 comma 0 to this point up here which is also on the unit circle. Well notice it's on the unit circle and it's described by this triangle. So this has coordinate cosine theta comma sine theta. So what we're really looking for is the distance from 1 0 to the point cosine theta comma sine theta. And so like I said we're going to use the distance formula for that. So that means we're going to have chord theta is equal to the square root of, we'll have cosine theta minus 1 quantity squared. So let's go ahead and write that down. 
and then plus sine theta minus zero quantity squared. So that's going to be plus sine squared theta. Great. Now let's see what we get when we simplify that. So we can multiply out this cosine theta minus one quantity squared. That's going to give us cosine squared theta minus two cosine theta and then plus one. And then we have a plus sine squared theta. Great. And now what we can do is take this cosine squared and this sine squared and combine them together into a one because we know cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is one. And so I can change that one to a two by doing the addition. Okay, good. And now the next thing that I wanna do <clears throat> is uh, rewrite this as two times the square root of one half one minus cosine theta. Great. So notice what I did there is I factored a four out of this square root. When it came out of the square root, it became a two, but that required changing this two, which is in the numerator, to a two in the denominator. But that allows us to use um, a power reducing formula to describe this one half one minus cosine theta. Notice that's gonna be the same thing as two times the square root of sine squared theta over two. But now if we take the square root here, we get two times the sine of theta over two. Okay, so we've written the chord function in terms of the sine function. We wrote the exterior function in terms of the secant function and thus the cosine function. And earlier we wrote the versed sine function and the half versed sine function in terms of the cosine function. Now there are a few more of these historical trigonometric functions, but they can all be written in terms of our normal day-to-day -day trigonometric functions. So that's a good place to stop.